The Scioto Audubon is a metro park found a few miles away from Ohio State's main campus. Located in the Brewery District of Columbus, Ohio, the park acts as a source of recreation and education for the state's capital. Beyond the trees and the trails lies the heart of the park, its nature center. It boasts a renovated and modern infrastructure, as well as a natural geothermal cooling system and classrooms to hold educational programs for the youth of Columbus. The park is also home to an extensive wetland system, which can be seen both from the trails and from the Whittier Peninsula connected to the Audubon. This allows the area to serve important ecological functions, such as increasing biodiversity in the area, allowing for a flyway for migrating birds, and acting as flood prevention from the Scioto River. While widely adored now by the citizens of Columbus, the area was not always a metro park. In fact, it comes from an ecological restoration project taking place in the late 2000s. A 2010 interview by NBC4, a Columbus news channel, with naturalist Jim McCormick details an overview of the project that took place. We took an area that was essentially a brown field, had a lot of pollution problems associated with old development, cleared it off and made it into a um, landscape that's suitable for wildlife and birds. So there's a tremendous spike in diversity. This is exactly what we ought to be doing with our urban areas. The brown space Mr. McCormick mentions was in place just a few decades ago when the area was being used for manufacturing and industrial uses. As a result, there were a number of ecological challenges that naturalists face when trying to convert the land to a metro park and prominent wetland. The initiative to store the Whittier Peninsula began when the city of Columbus adopted the Riverfront Vision Plan, a document outlining restoration for a nine-mile stretch along the Scioto and Olentangy Rivers. Included in this plan was the area of the Whittier Peninsula. Audubon, Ohio, city, the city of Columbus, and Franklin County Metro Parks all agreed to collaborate in order to restore the Whittier Peninsula. In order to restore the park and ensure its success, a logic model is needed to be a guide for the process. For a bigger picture, a long-term goal that would be useful for the park would be to transform the area to sustain thriving ecosystems and serve historical functions similarly to the pre-industrial area. This would act as a migratory bird flyway. In order to accomplish this, a medium-term goal of attracting migratory birds as indication of restored function would lead to major migratory birds fly away with many natural habitats. By assessing short-term goals, this will act as a stepping stone to achieve the medium and long-term goal. In order to restore the function of the land for birds, planting meadows of native vegetation would improve soil quality. This could be done by garnering for labor-based volunteers or finding sponsors and financial support. Another short-term goal would include having the necessary food sources for migratory birds. It would also be helpful to add more garbage cans around the park to reduce the amount of waste in the water. When forming restoration goals, creating a space where Columbus residents could enjoy the park and receive an education about the area was a priority. This is because restoration leaders wanted community members to support the land use change and to continue investing in the area in the future. To host new education centers in urban areas, to get more people involved in planting new trees and taking action in their community because that's how we'll really be able to affect large-scale changes. Throughout this project, various types of reference information could be used to achieve the desired results or to decide what the desired results are. For example, same place, different time information could be used by looking at previous information and old pictures of the peninsula before it was an industrial center. This may help researchers understand what could be beneficial now when considering park usage by people and animals, and especially migratory birds. Also, same time different location reference information can be used by looking at the Olentangy River Wetland Research Park. The fauna located here has established itself as a functional environment adjacent to a large river in the Columbus area, so the Scioto Audubon Park may be able to incorporate some of the same vegetation. Upon restoration, there were many important issues to consider. For example, the peninsula suffered from soil contamination of heavy metals like asbestos due to its industrial history. This was resolved by moving over 9,000 cubic yards of the contaminated soil and replacing some of it with clean fill. Testing the soil allowed the conservation team to ensure it was healthy. In areas where the soil was not replaced, man-made wetlands were installed to filter excess pollutants and prevent them from entering the Scioto River. This also improved stormwater drainage. The site had also experienced invasion of non-native species such as bush honeysuckle, autumn olive, and garlic mustard. Research has outlined the negative effects of these invasive species, notably including pushing out important native wildlife. To resolve this, volunteers and staff used mechanical methods for immediate removal and herbicide use to ensure long-term effectiveness. 
Herbicide usage was considered ecologically justifiable due to the benefits associated with the migratory bird stopover habitat that was able to grow after their removal. Students were recruited to then install native plants including spicebush, dogwood, witch hazel, and elderberry. Planting success was then monitored and evaluated by recruiting students to map the area several times a week using GPS coordinates. This not only provided necessary data to conservation director Doreen Whitley concerning the restoration project's status, it also taught students a specific real-life technique for gathering plant data. Further, since this park is usable by the public, litter contaminates the ground surrounding the trails and in the Scioto River. While there have been efforts to control trash and plastics from entering the water with garbage cans placed around the park, many bottles and cups still disrupt the environment. This has environmental and social implications since litter is a nuisance for those enjoying the park. During restoration, volunteers were critical to completing tasks such as moving soil and removing invasive species while also encouraging community members to care about the project. However, finances were still necessary. Financial contributions came largely from Grange Insurance, a company located in Columbus. Philip Urban, a recently retired CEO of Grange Insurance, convinced Grange's board to buy naming rights to the center for $4 million after learning about the project through outreach initiatives. Urban then set up a fundraising committee that eventually raised over $14.5 million, far exceeding Audubon, Ohio's original goal of $8 million. This shows the importance of outreach and stakeholders in restoration projects. Also, adaptive management was critical throughout this restoration project. After replacing the polluted soil and removing invasive species, the restoration crew continued monitoring the status of soil health, invasive species content, and the health of the newly installed native species so that treatments could be reapplied or altered as necessary. Further, the involvement and consideration of stakeholders in the process, including financial investors as well as Columbus residents, was necessary to ensure the project received adequate support and that the community was educated. Moving forward, an adaptive management mentality will be crucial to ensuring the park continues to thrive and prevent future issues from being ignored.